all right uh, welcome to this special round table uh, which is organized by e4m in association with salesforce the topic that we have is quite the flavor of the season if i may use this word the topic is generative ai in service uh, five ways in which ai is elevating uh, cx in india uh, a bit of context before i introduce my esteemed panelist uh, today we have seen what uh, ai has done over the years and with generative ai catching up like wildfire uh, it is not only transforming businesses uh, uh, and it's of also having a lot of impact on the customer facing uh, side of the business which is the customer experience uh, today i have with me industry leaders who understand who will try to make sense of the cusp of change that we are at you know we are still trying to understand what it can unleash we can see some early signs of what it can do but we need to fully understand what generative ai can do to businesses and uh, we are very fortunate to have our industry leaders i will just introduce them we have mr uh, oshashish saha gm uh, business development and consumer experience wipro consumer care thank you mr saha for joining us we have mr shashi ranjan head of customer experience dr lal path labs uh, with us thanks uh, for joining us we have uh, mr akhil sharma head cx razor pay who will be sharing his thoughts on what it means uh, where do we stand in terms of this conversation we also have with us uh, ms sapna agarwal who uh, is the head of operational excellence at hcg thanks uh, uh, ms agarwal uh, for joining us uh, we also have shweta srivastava ms shweta srivastava is chief customer experience officer at tata click thank you ms srivastava and we also have uh, our co collaborator uh, mr akshay murthy who is the regional sales director sales force who are at the cutting edge of this conversation and we would love to hear from from all of you what is happening in this space let me start my first question um, uh, let me start my first question with mr uh, uh uh mr uh, ranjan you know let me come to you to begin with you know ai as we of course know uh, uh driven customer care has transformed the business landscape it is of course quite visible but with generative ai now that is coming in the scene how will it further reshape the customer experience what happens when you have another layer of ai which is more intelligent coming in the way what exactly does it mean for customer service thank you rohel thank you for this question as you rightly mentioned this point that we are in a very early stage of generative ai however we have seen the potential of ai how it has transformed the entire customer experience now if we club it with the generative ai what is going to be change the first change which will come is about the personalization at a scale we have lot of data available based on this data how we are going to leverage it for the personalized experience for a consumer at the same time getting the insights for the overall brand for example if i create a cohort of a customer segment and then target it educate the customer about the brand and the services those are available and at the same time meet the needs of that customer this is something which is a very powerful tool where the customer will also get the complete package out of it and the brand will also get the benefit out of it so that's one change which we see the second is about a lot of uh, activity which is happening now in tier 3 tier 4 and the small cities also so the multilingual or we can call it as a regional languages that kind of conversation can be curated out of this generative ai because the generative ai will be able to understand the sentiment of a customer the make the context out of it 
and did the get then give the response based on it so the customer will be able to converse or a chat in their own language the third which comes to the is is about getting the predictive analytics out of it based on the ai model or a generative ai model we will we'll be able to predict the habit of a customer the pattern of a customer and then give the solution based on it so these three are the top trends which i see which is going to transform the customer experience based on the generative ai wonderfully explained uh, i think uh, what you refer to is it becoming more contextual uh, giving you that ease of answering you know responding to you in your own comfort language maybe you know uh, you know these are this is what i think you mean to say let me let me go to you akhil with the same question what is your opinion i mean not only opinion how do you see this unraveling the generative ai piece unleashing a different experience how do you make sense of it what exactly does it entail sure sure of course so if you see uh, what generative ai has uh, has done uh, i think on, on top of ai is actually it has brought in the ability to use context uh, so uh, as uh, rightly said by my friend uh, in lal path labs the idea is that we could use that context uh, to build on those conversations personalize all uh, the con content uh, for the user consider experiences such as search uh, search used to be a, an experience wherein someone would actually uh, uh, basically search across the index of pages try and understand uh, which content is most relevant but now with generative ai someone would be able to summarize uh, things that are relevant uh, for uh, that person across multiple pages so consider say for razor pay uh, this actually means how how you would want to integrate an api from razor pay uh, to their uh, payment portals and this is an important part of developer experience or merchant experience uh, for us with this capability now you'd be able to um, say merge and summarize pages across uh, various other products uh, all the other apis all the things that a user needs depending on the context that they have provided uh, so that is uh, an example of the power of this ai uh, that we have of course we've talked about predictive analytics uh, capabilities and i've seen uh, i was in a conference very recently uh, with open ai uh, microsoft and uh, the power of uh, really summarizing something very complex in terms of the excel uh, sheets and the data that you may have uh, with uh, just a few sentences uh, and being able to predictively analyze what could be the pattern coming out of that data uh, and what what should you do as a user so the uh, the applications are immense right from stock recommendations to uh, say things such as uh, the way your systems may need a lot more uh, insight and you, you need to uh, look into them uh, a lot more deeper i think uh, ai is going to be that tool uh, that actually becomes an assistant for our users uh, at least in the in the near future and near term uh, to really do a lot of those things that initially would have re uh, required very very technical skill set uh, for those tasks to be accomplished now with um, being able to converse uh, with a model in their own natural languages we should be um, much more uh, empowered to be able to use and make uh, uh, say sense of that data that that exists right now absolutely absolutely uh, let me come to you uh, mr murthy here uh, you know you heard uh, what uh, mr sharma and uh, mr ranjan spoke about and you sit on the other side of the fence let me ask you uh, when we talk of what ai of course used to do but what the what would generative ai mean uh, from the tech aspect from the innovation aspect uh, uh, how would you like to respond to that see i couldn't agree more with either shashi or akil right uh, fantastic uh, examples that they have shared but i'll just probably take one step back right good customer experience is all about addressing what the customer wants when he wants it and how he wants it traditionally this has always required human intervention 
you know, AI came about and then this kind of changed. AI is no longer a nice to have, right? It's pretty much a prerequisite for success these days. Uh, AI powered tools are becoming a standard norm across business functions, including customer experience. We need AI for achieving faster response time, more personalized experience, increase employee productivity and so on, right? Salesforce as a company has been investing in AI for almost a decade now. We started this journey way back in 2014 and we pioneered AI for CRM, what we call as Einstein, our native AI, which is baked into every product, delivering more than a trillion predictions a week to our customers, right? Now, with the advent of generative AI, you know, uh, some of the points that Shashi made uh, are bang on. And I'll probably try explaining that with the example, right? Uh, if a customer from Chennai is reaching out to say, since we have Tata Click representation on this panel, co coming to Tata Click for a sweater in summer, the generative AI chatbot will be able to ask where he's traveling. And upon knowing that he's visiting Gulmarg, will be able to suggest the type of sweater he would need based on the temperature in Gulmarg, right? So this pretty much encompasses everything that our other panelists spoke about, right? Be it hyper personalization, real-time assistance, uh, predictive customer service, right? In addition to that, probably one additional point that I would like to make is the capability of AI also to do, you know, content generation. Uh, businesses can seriously leverage generative AI to create personalized content at scale, whether it's marketing materials, social media posts, or, you know, product descriptions, uh, AI generated content can save time while maintaining quality. Absolutely. I'm so much uh, looking forward to this kind of an AI support because when I talk to uh, chatbots sometimes, you know, I am fascinated by their responses. You know, they would take me back to my question multiple times. So, of course, I mean, this is something uh, that would be very, uh, you know, empowering for, for the customers. Uh, when it can understand the context and give you suggestions beyond what you have asked for. Let me uh, bring in uh, the ladies on the panel also in this discussion. Let me come to you, uh, Ms. Srivastava. Uh, you know, uh, if you had to list uh, three use cases of generative AI in service today, uh, which you think have the potential to transform customer service, uh, what would those be? I would also bring this question to uh, Ms. Agarwal and uh, Mr. Saha uh, as well, but let me start with you. Sure, well, it's a uh, very good question. And uh, uh, I, I really believe that uh, uh, generative AI holds immense potential uh, in transforming customer experience. Some of the examples our panelists have already given are uh, great examples uh, that we've heard already. Um, top three use cases, if you ask from my perspective and from you know uh, e-commerce uh, industry perspective, uh, and I, I think uh, valid for any other industry, uh, it can um, generate. A, so I'll step back and you know just uh, you know uh, talk about. Um, whole digital transformation that has happened in last three, four years, right? And COVID has really accelerated it for our country and globally. Uh, in this digital transformation, we saw, uh, you know, AI taking a, you know, major role in transformation, uh, not only customer experience, but in other industries also. Um, and this, and we now we are calling it uh, traditional AI, and generative AI is a new thing, right? Uh, in a, uh, and we are in a uh, very initial stages, but we are already calling it traditional AI and generative AI. So that is a difference that we are already seeing. And uh, uh, while uh, we we all have implemented chatbots and we've seen the responses, we've seen the success of it. I think generative AI will take it beyond all of this. And uh, all those examples that I've already shared, I will not cover it again. I will not say it again. But uh, in prediction, in human-like interactions, 
changing the whole conversational AI, uh, uh, you know, and all of that will now happen. Uh, coming back to your question on the, you know, top three use cases, um, I think it will be very beneficial for uh, customer service teams who are looking to, you know, gather customer feedback and make sense out of it. What do I mean by that is uh, when, when you have a lot of data, right? The challenge is not collecting the data, challenge is actually curating the data. And from data, you know, uh, telling out relevant information and from that information, generating insights that can be used to improve product services and overall customer experience. So I think generative AI can be really, um, uh, you know, thoughtfully used uh, in generating insights. Um, it, we can analyze um, voice of customer coming from all channels uh, and uh, really gather it at the center of everything and uh, uh, get better insights. Also, um, you know, this can be used for going really deep into the data, understanding customer pain points, understanding customer perspective, and then probably, uh, you know, creating a solution for the uh, or improving product and services of the company. So that is one use case which I see and it has worked for us very well in Tata Click. So I can confidently say that this will uh, this will uh, help brands to do um, sell out better insights from the data they have. Uh, other example or the second use case that I will um, uh, tell you is about the whole interaction analysis, right? Um, and I was there in Hyderabad yesterday, other event, and there also we were talking about AI, generative AI, and a lot of discussion happened. And uh, a lot of people, you know, talked about how interaction analysis is changing the game. Uh, currently, what is happening, and I'm saying this in a customer services space, when customer is having an interaction with us, it's or everything is post facto, right? Interaction is done, now we're looking at it and we're seeing what are the gaps and we can bridge it. Interaction and analysis uh, can be done using generative AI, listening to the conversations real time and provide real time help to the frontline uh, customer service executive, um, giving next best action or giving next best decision. Um, and not only stopping here, but also since it is monitoring 100% of the data, 100% of the conversations, it can, it can actually generate better insights for us um, and actually can tell us what is a customer sentiment, what is an agent sentiment, and what is a sentiment overall. So this is also one of the use case. I think it will um, really work well with generative AI. Uh, and the third use case um, is um, virtual assistants, I think. Uh, uh, it's already been touched upon, but we have uh, done this at Tata Click uh, long back uh, with AI. It was, uh, so we have one loyalty program where as a benefit, we, we provide relationship manager assistance. So we use virtual relationship manager, uh, uh, you know, program to help customers. We can use generative AI on top of it to provide better assistance to the customers because now, like everyone said, um, generative AI has the capability to provide whole context to the conversation, right? And um, and then giving solutions, so it works better. So I think uh, virtual assistants will also take a, uh, a you know a different uh, direction and will be very, very successful in, in you know, years to come. So these are three use cases on top of my mind, uh, Rahel. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Srivastava, for uh, sharing uh, these elaborate uh, examples. Really, really helps understand it. Uh, let, me, let me come to you, Mr. Saha, uh, with the same question. Uh, what are the top three use cases, uh, according to you, uh, that would, uh, you know, kind of uh, have the potential to transform customer experience in a major way? Yeah, thanks Rohil for the question. I think it's a very uh, key question now. And uh, I would take the conversation from what Shweta was here sharing just now. So basically, I think the most important intervention that uh, Generative AI will bring at this particular point of time is changing 
the borders of interaction from click based to conversation based and that's what a virtual assistant will do or a virtual assistants will do. so earlier even if the interaction was through a chat bot it was always based on click okay fine uh, we have reached here it's more like a flow chart based of conversation which happens now it would be more like a conversation wherein the virtual assistant thinks looks at the pattern of the data which is there in the past and then comes up with answers which is more human like so that is the first intervention which is going to we will find across platforms for you know consumer interactions which is going to through virtual assistant uh the second uh, most important area i think uh, will uh, where uh, generative ai will impact is uh, personalization of the responses so it would be more personalized because it's like whatever information whatever data whatever consumer behavior is applicable for that respective individual or for the cohort of individual that this particular individual belongs to uh, the response and the offerings will be more personalized okay. and that's where it will make is the relevance of these conversations and the third element is in terms of reading the sentiments of uh, individuals and consumers so the emotional aspect which is sometimes covered in the conversations which is difficult for a machine to pick up to machine learning or other mechanisms i think generative ai with the context with the way uh, it is analyzing data to uncover the patterns will help to get those emotional context of the of the uh, consumer what they are actually trying to mean and respond so i think these are the three key areas where you expect more intervention from generative ai going forward right so it be, it does more proactiveness from uh, what we can expect that's what you mean uh miss agarwal uh, your thoughts your initial thoughts on this so thanks everyone uh, it was it was really really nice to hear from all of you so many ideas thoughts so thanks to hell i just wanted to tell you that what i feel it's going to be a boom for healthcare uh, the way today uh, patients are taking the service or consuming the service or consumers are interacting with the healthcare Uh, is very very human dependent and very very personalized when it comes to the shop floor when people actually walk into the door of the uh, institution but when it comes to offline when they are at their home virtually it's, it's very limited the amount of service like somebody was uh, telling it is just like picking what i want and mostly it is restricted only to booking appointment online and making some payment online imagine the amount of issues that the consumers are experiencing today because appointment is just the start of the entire journey of the uh, of the service that the patient or the consumer is trying to actually avail from a healthcare system and if you if you see at each step of the journey there is a road block because uh, from the healthcare institution side you have to manage millions of customer journey who are in different stages of their uh, actually treatment cycle so i would like to uh, first reflect on that like um, both the sides as a consumer side and the provider side so first uh, what actually the biggest problem that any provider would face is different uh, consumers especially in healthcare are in their different journey uh, stages and hence connecting with them at every single journey stages bases the emotional Uh, sensitivity that the consumer is going through is is a very big challenge uh, from the provider side as well as from the consumer side that they are not able to understand how to connect when to connect and actually who to connect with so there are so many questions which actually goes through a, a consumer mind when they actually want to come to a healthcare institution in different stages of their journey so imagine if this is added with a virtual healthcare assistant or something which actually has the information the institution has the information 
and with the uh, sales force having its crm consuming all that information and understanding what the patient needs what is the next cycle of journey that the patient is in and what is the emotional stage where the patient is which can be you know actually connected through various simple questions throughout their journey you know that there is an appointment they going to come up for a patient are you anxious do you want to know something so these are all proactive thing which can be done currently it is more you know somebody is asking and saying that okay i need an appointment patient many a times they do not know that if they need an appointment they only know that they are facing some challenge and they want to talk to somebody even to find out if they need to meet a doctor so these are some spaces which are actually going to uh, you know expand uh, the entire arena of healthcare both provider and consumer i feel uh, through uh, you know generative ai so understanding what the challenges are which are probably emotional in nature or maybe very very early stages in their disease or symptom through simple questions to understanding the lifestyle of the consumer because everything is now connected there are smart devices which are connected there are already chatbots available so you know that the consumer is actually going through uh, you know um, a period which is challenging and then connecting it with the database healthcare database and understanding what actually the consumer can take or can consume this is going to be a space which will help uh, the consumer to understand his problem first and then take the necessary service which can come through these recommendations so this is something that i feel that will help Uh, many consumers to not delay their uh, you know uh, services that they want to take uh, in any healthcare institution so it will be more uh, prompt and more proactive and more assisted so this is one uh, is what i thought is going to benefit both the sides second right. if you see the biggest challenge is like even how much ever educated we are we hesitate to ask the questions we hesitate to ask because we find sometimes that probably they are very small and probably they are uh, our providers are very difficult to reach probably if, especially if they are specialist or how do you reach and ask some silly question like should i eat this should i not eat this because i don't know what i'm searching online is actually suitable to my health need my last report my doctor's advice my body weight my mental state is i don't know how many permutation and combination one is trying to find out to understand if i really need to ask this question to someone so at this point of time imagine there is nobody to educate a patient proactively or what a consumer should do or should not do when they are actually undergoing a very very long treatment or intense treatment or in general as such so this is one way that uh, one can actually connect a lot of healthcare data understand what the last report was and help the patient to actually uh, you know uh, answer very trivial question which can actually be uh, predicted and then can be communicated uh, to generative ai technology to ease out the problem and many a times it will really help the healthcare provider as well because uh, lifestyle is a very big component of treatment it is not something that uh, you know that can be removed from the medicine that we give to the patient because certain medicines they work much better if you manage your lifestyle better so um, especially in oncology or any lifestyle disease you see that you have to make lifestyle modification to ensure that you, your outcomes are better so this is something that is really going to benefit uh, the consumer if you connect it with the you know real unstructured data that we have in healthcare because many of our prescriptions are just written consuming it with the structured data ensuring that the consumer are, are able to understand in the language that they can understand like 70% of our population they reside in rural areas so for them to understand the doctor's prescription connecting it their lab data is such a challenge today so the moment they go home it is like a big gap between they trying to connect what they are trying to communicate and that is where i think is a very very big role that generative ai can play so this is the second uh, thing probably that i thought where uh, it is going to change the landscape of uh, healthcare as such um, in a very very broad aspect third i just wanted to tell one thing and learning from covid i know that people were struggling to get beds okay now uh, even now if somebody has to meet a specialist uh, it is not very easy especially in a uh, in a specialized domain like cardiology oncology and many other services uh, you know neurosurgery 
there will be 10% of super specialist and any which is you know everybody knows the scarcity of doctor uh, in in all the countries scarcity of nurses healthcare assistants in all the country so it is not just a provider side problem it is also a consumer side problem like if somebody wants to really meet someone it is such a big challenge especially if the resources are scarce so it can be scarce resource for uh, booking a test which are like really available in very 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 uh, restricted or very small amount of healthcare provider or maybe meeting a super specialist imagine if um, many a times our consumer have to come at least 3 to 4 times post the treatment cycle and uh, especially for oncology they have to meet the doctor every 3 months and in these 3 months uh, the patient would have thought at least 100 times to actually meet the uh, you know and ask some questions and also probably may not need to come to a healthcare setup every 3 months imagine somebody coming all the way from jammu kashmir maybe to bangalore just to meet a doctor for 15 minutes so if somebody has to really solve this problem the provider has to be made available to connect to a customer for even this 15 minutes discussion and the consumer has to be finding out the availability of the provider so one is how this entire resource can be optimized uh, at the back end when you know that okay this consumer has this 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 problem so the amount of information that you can actually build before meeting a customer will help you optimize the time that you are trying to actually spend with the customer or the consumer now this is i think applicable in all industry where resources are less and then the demand is more uh, here when you actually make the resource more available make a specialist more available make a bed more available and the consumer is able to interact and say like for example today if i do or if i book a slot for a doctor and yesterday i know that the consumer or the patient's health is not good and he is able to interact and say see my health is not good and i know that patient's health is not good either i can prioritize or i can deprioritize or the patient is not going to come so i can free that slot for somebody else to meet so this kind of communication will help to actually meet the real demand of uh, the entire service provider and consumer side and also will address the larger problem that we have in hand that is about the availability of resources which are actually getting scarce day by day so this is something that uh, probably i thought and if joined hands with the uh, preventive healthcare sector in a rural area imagine the amount of uh, lack of information that we have in a sector you know in a in a small village about certain type of disease which are now picking up uh, at a rapid pace if you mm-hmm. connect those with the local government hospital if somebody wants to really explore this it will be a fantastic approach to actually solve a lot of problem that as a country that we are going to face so these are some right. of the things that uh, probably i thought that i'll bring to the table and definitely personalization and out of pocket pay these are definitely there in healthcare as well and it is a bigger problem to solve because uh, currently if we see in salesforce there is a beautiful something called as journey builder which we are capitalizing on to ensure that we are staying in touch with our consumer but if it is personalized for a for a person who actually uh, thinks that you know uh, greeting or meeting is actually more important than the amount of time or a coffee is more important i can i would like to get a coffee served before i meet the doctor in that 15 minutes to reduce my anxiety so this is the kind of customization personalization can be brought to the table and to reduce the anxiety of the patient and actually deliver true customer service so these are some of the things that probably i thought probably would be great for uh, the healthcare provider as well as well as consumer thank you mr agarwal uh, i could visualize you know what all you spoke about and how it benefits i mean how the best part of healthcare if i have to you know given example you know the best part is ahead of us with all of these things coming in you know how it will not only impact businesses but society at large you know that these are brilliant points on this note let me also go to mr ranjan you know since we have just touched upon the healthcare bit uh, would you like to add few points here right thanks to hell i think very important point which sapna touched upon so the earlier there was a notion or i can say a sentiment around it that the people might not adopt towards the digital transformation i think during the covid we saw that that the people started adopting to digital transformation side of it 
most of the customer also got the benefit out of it. So this particular thing has really changed in overall healthcare sector. When it comes to how we are going to deploy the conversational or the generative AI in terms of benefit the customers, that is there. Most of the players, they are taking the advantage of it. They are helping the customer. This is not only limited to it, we are also giving the empowerment to the customers. When I say empowerment to the customer, now they can decide about the entire journey. It is not only limited to a menu-based kind of our interaction, it is completely whole package where they are conversing with the brand. They're getting the direct answer about it. So I, this is what my thought is about this particular point, which you just mentioned. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, let me uh, uh, kind of uh, remind all of you that though I am asking these questions, but if there are any counterpoints, any additions, please feel free uh, to make those, just let me know so that I am aware of it, that I'm giving time to that person. Let me uh, come to you, uh, 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 Mr. Sharma, you know. Uh, you know, of course, we know that uh, the next differentiator between organizations is uh, the use of AI for CX, you know, how well they use it, how they put that in practice. That will give them an advantage, you know. When we talk of the Indian markets versus the, versus the global markets, you know, where is our story? At what stage are we compared to our global uh, counterparts? And is it sectoral? Is there any sectoral highlight that certain sectors have taken a lead of adopting, you know, this technology? If you could share your thoughts on this. Sure, sure. I think uh, when you think about how uh, say early revolution within uh, say generative AI space really happened. Uh, I think it really started with uh, the ability to generate content based on the context uh, in there. And I think uh, that's the area that benefited and probably took the lead a lot more uh, than some of the other sectors. Uh, so any sectors which are really dependent upon uh, content uh, changes, content generation uh, on a scale uh, or any um, marketing automation uh, that may be needed. Uh, all of that is really dependent on either creating a newer set of images, either creating new set of uh, video formats, uh, music formats or text uh, formats in there. I think all of those things uh, were the first few sectors that really uh, caught onto the trend. Uh, I think that was a trend um, primarily dominated by the West initially. And then I think a lot of Indian uh, players started uh, understanding the uh, use of that within SEO space or within the marketing automation space, customer journey management space as well. And now I think we are at, at a stage then uh, that most of the companies are really uh, identifying more nuanced uh, the opportunities coming out of this. So for example, I can talk of uh, FinTech sector itself. Uh, so we've been using KYC. Uh, we've been uh, getting a lot of the documents uh, from uh, users and we try and uh, say, identify or parse the relevant information out of that uh, document. So the generative AI uh, techniques can actually really help us identify the right content to focus on within a document that may be in multiple languages, we could say consider an MCA uh, say company, uh, contract or uh, something that really identifies a company or an individual user, uh, and they could be multiple set of documents that a con consumer could provide to you. Based on that, uh, the generative AI could actually look at which are the relevant things that we need to capture out of that document, whether that is verifiable or not, and then move forward in the onboarding journey for us. Uh, so that that's one application within uh, FinTech. I think education sector itself uh, really benefited a lot with content summarization uh, bits in there. Uh, I'll, plethora of content was easily available. And you would have seen this uh, in terms of the content platform, such as YouTube as well. A lot of the teams started using that. I've recently heard that um, uh, there are uh, new bots uh, or AI uh, news readers coming in uh, from at, in, in various yes. news. In so fact, you know, just, I mean, to add a bit of digress a bit, I am interviewing very soon an AI news yeah. anchor. Yeah, I think, uh, Recently, I think in Karnataka, one news channel actually just uh, brought in one of my friends uh, was really uh, building that technology in there. So 
I think the uh, opportunities are immense. I think we are scratching the surface as a surface at this moment, primarily on the content side. Um, and I think someone uh, rightly mentioned uh, it started with content uh, initially, and then uh, now we are actually identifying newer opportunities coming in health, uh, tech, fintech, education sectors, and probably at some point uh, maybe uh, assistance for stock recommendations, predictive analysis around those kind of things. Uh, but yeah, I think it's currently at content level uh, for most of the companies. All right. So this is an open question. Any response? Respond to it. Most welcome. Anyone else wants to respond to this question? Most welcome. Else, I'll go to my next question. Uh, yes, I'll add, uh, add one point. Points. Yes. Yes, please. Just to add one point, so I was uh, read. I thought uh, it would be good to share it with everyone. I was reading one report, uh, and BCG did some survey uh, with global service leaders across uh, across the world, and ninety five percent of uh, uh, so the, the report was uh, the result was that ninety five percent of the customers they expect would be served by AI in next three years. So that is the prediction. I just wanted to add, since uh, uh, you know what Phil was talking about, it that uh, all the global service leaders are already feeling that in next three years it will really uh, change the way it is happening right now. Yes, Mr. Saha, you wanted to add something. Yeah. Uh, so fintech and uh, health tech is definitely you know areas where generative AI will add a lot of value. But I feel uh, EV is the area where uh, generative AI will add immense amount of value because uh, earlier the data which was available was what was available in maps. Right? This is located in this particular place. So now with EV, as it is going on the road, the vehicle is collecting all kinds of data, like what is the condition of the road, which shop is next door, where is the petrol pump, okay. So already EV has started using things like, you know, where is the, you know, next battery swap location and all those other aspects, right? Now, it's very soon, it would try to contextualize stuff and say like, you know, uh, say your cash is getting over and you are near an ATM, why don't you put your cash, right? Or, you know, uh, this road has more potholes. Okay. So why don't you shift to this particular road? And I think it would be able to do it in real time, looking at the pattern. That, okay, maybe, or you know, uh, why don't you uh, catch up and drink at this particular place because every Friday, right? So those, Absolutely. Those things, I think, the EV uh, with the advent of EV and the way of way they are capturing data across all touch points of a type, you know, generative AI is going to become a key uh, aspect, and that was useful for marketers also. Right, right. Uh, Mr. Muthi, let me uh, come to you. Uh, you know, uh, as we know, uh, with the growing use of uh, generative AI, <clears throat> it's also said that one of the big shifts will be in the knowledge creation domain. Uh, as it will be primarily AI bot friendly than human friendly because Bots need to understand more at that point of time, you know, because they will be at the front facing interface of customer experience. Uh, Jeremy, uh, how will it uh, disrupt the knowledge generation, especially the technical one, which brands often, you know, have? Uh, what, what is what are your thoughts on that? The growing use of generative AI has the potential to disrupt knowledge generation and AI bot is just one such use case, right? Generative AI can help automated content generation such as documentation, tutorials, white papers, and so on, right? Now, from a Salesforce perspective, we announced Einstein GPT for sales, which can auto-generate sales, sales tasks like composing emails, scheduling meetings, and generating meeting summary. Right. When it comes to uh, Einstein GPT for marketing, uh, this will uh, dynamically generate personalized content to engage customers and prospect prospects across different channels like email, mobile, web, advertising, so on. Right. 
generative ai will also help in faster knowledge sharing through different channels like bots and make information more accessible for audience by translating it in multiple languages or translate complex technical concepts into more accessible language making technical knowledge more understandable to a broader audience right uh you know when it comes to things like ai driven r&d and personalized learning uh Salesforce is coming up with something called Einstein GPT for developers, which will help improve developer productivity with Salesforce's own large language models. Right now, having said this, we also need to understand that information generated by uh, generative AI could be influenced by the data used to train it, potentially leading to biased or inaccurate technical knowledge as well. right so we must it is extremely important that uh, we ensure that knowledge generated by generative ai is unbiased and accurate right i think that that's a very important point uh, that that you have made uh, let me come to you miss uh, srivastava uh, you know uh, data is a very critical part of this entire piece of generative ai uh how will generative ai leverage customer data to provide personalized answers and recommendations and offer tailor made suggestions and solutions to uh, enhance uh, customer experience though initially you did uh, we did have a little bit of uh, you know an understanding of it but i want to get a more uh, elaborate uh, response from you sure sure yeah i think we all have been talking about it personalization is one thing that uh, we can really leverage data uh, through generative ai and give customized and tailored responses um and we all understand right personalization comes with its own challenge right and i share this uh, example with a lot of people there is a well known brand when they send me any email communication or sms or whatsapp they address me as mr shrivastava and i'm like you don't know me at all <laughs> and uh, it's an airline and i i'm a frequent traveler so it puts me off right so personalization can really go off even with you know food delivery app uh, we use it day in and out and if you are vegetarian and you are you know always ordering vegetarian food you cannot give recommendations of any biryani corner right so these are the challenges that we are currently facing uh, i think uh, but generative ai can really iron out a lot of these uh, challenges in personalization and help uh, and be more closer to what customer uh, wants um, another example i heard yesterday only very fresh in my mind somebody was sharing that uh, she is a regular uh, uh, you know um, a member of uh, one of the very big hospitality brand uh, hotel and uh, whenever she comes they come and deliver filter coffee for her because she they know that she likes filter coffee uh, and so she was you know quite happy with every time they know what she needs so these are the kind of things that we can do with generative ai uh in in the you know space of personalization um i will quote one more example um akshay is here we we do uh, some we have done something with salesforce also so we have this process of uh, identifying customers as uh, green pass holders uh customers who have green pass uh, they are our loyal customers so we identify them from the you know set of database there's an algorithm that we have defined based on number of orders that they have uh, placed with us business that they have given with us uh, given to us and whole lot of other things and salesforce prompts it as a green pass customer whenever anyone is looking at that customer in the system right and when we spot that this is a green pass customer our whole uh, you know uh, handling of that customer changes in a way that yes this is my loyal customer and um, we'll have to you know handle it with utmost care and we have defined no question asked uh, refund policies etc etc so these are the kind of things we can do with personalization and generative ai can uh, really help um, in 
uh, you know making this even much better than what we are doing currently another example is on from the e-commerce uh, front we um, since it is all app you know online uh, there's no touch and feel that we can offer but we can provide recommendations to customers who are you know buying from our app um, and by reading or analyzing the customer behavior purchase history likes and dislikes yeah. all of that can really recommend uh, suitable options to customers uh, uh, still challenges are there if you you know if i'm a customer e-commerce customer and i buy uh, apparel a lot and still app is throwing me something really off digital uh, you know watch or apple watch which i am not a customer uh, i have not been buying from your app then it is very uh, you know off uh, but these are the kind of challenges i think uh, can be ironed out with a generative ai so yeah and uh, one more thing that i uh, i feel really is that uh, uh, we can really adopt to customers tone and language when we are responding you know to generative ai so if customer is talking in english english generative ai can you know um, can get into intelligent way of identifying uh, the to the tone and uh, uh, language that customer is using and respond in that way i think that is one thing that we can really leverage in you know uh, coming days uh, yeah these are some of the points that i would add at this point of time maybe can share much later thank you so much anyone else who has a point on this uh, yeah i think uh, you made uh, an important point in that uh, about data and uh, i think um, uh, mr akshay also talked about the pitfalls uh, so we all know uh, so you might have used chat gpt as well there's a rumor mode uh, that people actually refer to uh, chat gpt actually or any gpt technology has that uh, potential to actually get into uh, say humor because it's basically uh, it's trying to actually emulate how it has start how it has learned uh, various things so it's a generative pre trained transformer as such so uh, the level of the data that you've put into this uh, the kind of patterns it has analyzed across all of those data uh, patterns would actually tell uh, this model how to respond to a particular question and then that may not actually always mean that that information is accurate uh, that is only a particular way in which you come let's say uh, the model could uh, has learned to react to such a certain statements so that is a, a big big challenge uh, to something like a gpt technology unless there is a safeguard around that uh, we are able to provide feedback uh, to the model itself and it can learn on the go as well and there could be that training uh, in there uh, but uh, again i think data and uh, the way it has learned uh, to respond is an important uh, important in terms of how accurate that information may be absolutely absolutely uh, let me come to you mr saha you know as ai advances you know goes into another you know phase another chapter of its evolution the distinction between uh, generative ai and predictive ai is likely to fade right so give me a sense of are there ai systems emerging that would seamlessly merge the two yeah that's a uh, very critical question uh, uh well, thanks for asking this so uh, generative ai actually uh, contextualizes a situation it looks at the past data tries to identify certain patterns if there are certain patterns contextualizes to that particular context and then gives a recommendation so that is one part if we look at predictive ai that's like it takes those situations and tries to predict or forecast what is going to be the future okay. it's more the predictive ai is more like a astrology right so you cannot hold the person accountable for whatever they are saying the right thing so the uh, bridge is the key question actually and you know the output of the predictive ai is also an input for a generative ai ecosystem again to find out that whether that particular solution is again to the context or not 
So it is a combination of both these which is going to provide a you know a right fit kind of a solution. Maybe there is some work which has happened. Maybe some systems are created okay, which has you know combined these two aspects. Like a you know generative AI generates context, predictive AI predicts solution. That solution again becomes feedback to a generative AI system, and finally they give a fit and they say okay, this is the best predicted output. Uh, however, I have not come across something which is which has been able to give a good fit in that respect. Maybe there is something it's beyond my locus of information. However, I think you know you'll be seeing something in the near future. So there is there is some kind of a model fit to the outcomes of the generative AI system. I try to predict that this is a uh, you know astrology which is probably going to come true. This so I think that is uh, right. that is what I'm looking for. Right. Uh, everyone, please feel free if you have any counterpoints. Uh, it's a discussion. Uh, anyone else has anything to add? Please feel free. Uh, let me let me come to you. Uh, to add a point uh, to kill Lakshay and uh, Shweta while I was reflecting to content difficulty in interpreting the content. And then how a consumer in healthcare consumes it. So if you see generally, uh, if a patient wants to really know about something which he's going through, first uh, getting a content which is very, very specific to his need at that point of time. And then using that content to create an action. So I was reading that somewhere when you can see the content first, the search of the content would be easy because everything would be there uh, connected to a data source so somebody really don't need to search for a content the moment they search connecting all the dots the content will be readily available to them converting this content into a checklist or an action point for somebody to actually take uh, some action so that it is in my language that i can understand and then converting them into my calendar so that i can actually get a reminder at a specific point of time is something that will actually you know, bring a lot of personalization and very, uh, very good uh, amount of customization of some content which can be actually made to use into actionable items for any uh, consumer in healthcare. So I really felt that that is really going to be very, very helpful for uh, patients in general. Uh, second is, um, uh, you know, Shweta was talking about personalization. So generally in healthcare uh, we we actually struggle quite a bit to bring that hospitality into our hospitals uh, the reason is you know the workforce is generally uh, uh, you know tuned in a way that it is an environment that safety security comes first privacy comes first so somewhere where how much ever we try to bring in a solution for hospitality we really uh, you know, depend on a lot of data, which is very, very generic in nature to provide a service. Example, like if there are 100 patients in a hospital, if it's uh, weather is cold, so somebody will serve a lukewarm water. But maybe there is a patient who cannot have lukewarm water because of his throat, uh, because of his uh, condition of his throat or probably something that the medicine that he's taking is actually not suitable for that water that I'm going to serve. So imagine what kind of personalization can be brought in if you know the lifestyle of a, a patient before he comes in? Choice, uh, repeated choice, what he wants now, when he is going to come. This will bring a lot of ease and hence providing a personalized service within those restricted and uh, different priority environment will become much more easy for uh, any provider and the consumer when he is actually in the in a very tough time of his journey, will actually get a personalized service from a provider. Will actually reduce a lot of anxiety and, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you say? It will improvise their experience in a healthcare setup. It's something that uh, I think will be a game changer for anybody who wants to actually explore this space. So these were two things that I probably thought would share in this context. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing your thoughts on this. Um, Mr. Ranjan, uh, you know, as automation and generative AI-driven CX uh, automation becomes more prevalent, you know, businesses would need to invest in upskilling uh, 
their staff to manage, maintain, and optimize these technologies, right? How can this be done effectively in your view? Right, right, right. So when this entire activity of digital transformation was started, the idea was what can mimic whatever a human is doing. And that's how this entire transformation had started. Now, at the same time, it is very important that we teach our staff that how to leverage the technology and get the maximum out of it. So one is identifying the right team members. So identify the roles within your ecosystem that who should be responsible as the project manager for the entire activity and then the team below. So a project charter is very important, which needs to be done. Then comes the second part of it, upskilling of the existing staff. Train them about it, how the overall system will work, in case something is not working, what is expected out of it, what should be done. So the training is the second point, which is very important. Third is there should be a very clear measure of success. If you are implementing any project, there should be a very clear measure of success. And the entire team members who are involved in the project, they should be aware about it. That this is what the outcome which is expected, and this is how we have to achieve it. The fourth is, uh, while we are developing the transformation or a bot for the customer side of it, very important that we develop similar kind of activity for our internal staffs. And especially with the help of generative AI, this uh, this is, seems very achievable now, where an uh, entire contextual information can be given to the staff. They just come to the board, write the query, and the entire information is done there with them. The fifth is, uh, while uh, in a contact center ecosystem, what we can do, we have the speech analytics available. What we can do, we can implement the generative AI with it and get the information out of it. What is the sentiment of a customer? Now, based on this, we have a TNI available. The training need identification is there. And then we can design our module. So these are four or five points which will really help when it comes to the training and upskilling of the staff. Right. Right. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I have some more questions, but these are open to all of you, whoever would love to respond. My first question is about, you know, since we talk about customer data, a very sensitive thin line between insights and privacy, a growing conversation. Uh, how can we leverage data and yet ensure that security of data, which is so concerning, a lot of legislation coming around it. Any one of you, I mean, multiple, anyone can take this and you know, we can have multiple answers to this. Agree. I think uh, while Akshay uh, may have uh, very, very strong insights in this, uh, uh, I do believe that there are models which are emerging uh, right now. Uh, mostly, I think there were privacy concerns uh, for certain specific data uh, going outside uh, certain specific geography, geographical locations. So, for example, a lot of these uh, models have been trained uh, on in US servers. Uh, and there are concerns on a lot of this data flowing out of probably India, for example, fintech uh, data that we may have. Uh, so I think there are a few solutions that uh, I I know are kind of emerging with AWS and all, uh, also implementing certain solutions wherein they've actually enabled data centers uh, within India and they have their opportunities to train your own uh, systems. Very, very expensive though. Um, I think the only um, way to secure this data would be to probably ensure that the data resides within the geographical boundaries of, of a particular country. While PII uh, also remains another concern, uh, and you can actually also do that by masking. Uh, traditional encryption technologies may actually be able to, uh, say, address some of that. Uh, but yes, um, all of these things uh, being said, uh, the level of data which is needed uh, to train a model such as a GPT uh, would anyways require uh, to really cull through multiple types of uh, data points. And uh, the data security concerns would, uh, would uh, are currently there. So. They are currently there. Yes. Yeah. So I, I can probably take a thing at it. Uh, you know, our approach is grounded on four pillars, right? Uh, Trust, relevant security, and ecosystem. Well, let's start with trust. We are not only uh, we are not only investing here 
but we have a track record of doing this <clears throat> right we've had an ethical pract ethical ai practice part of our office of ethical and human use for 6 years now right in addition we are building a human in the loop framework so customers can verify everything that is created before it goes out uh, to their customer and train the model so it continues uh, to become smarter more accurate and relevant to your company data right on the second pillar uh, we've heard on the importance of relevance ai is only as good as the data you use einstein gpt doesn't use external data that can be unreliable and inaccurate it uses your crm data or carefully vetted and trusted external sources so it can be more confident right the third is uh, we have security right uh, we also built a proprietary framework for einstein where we can use a variety of models without sacrificing security einstein gpt maintains secure data access protects personal identifiable uh, information and is purpose built for customer 360 and the final pillar is of course around the ecosystem while we have an amazing research team that's creating generative ai tech in house we are also partnering formally uh, within this space to make sure that we are bringing the freedom of choice to our customers right so this is this is what we do i think there was a case in point very recently with samsung uh, training the model with their own proprietary information and that information leaking out uh, to everyone else uh, within the ecosystem i think uh, there are a certain guardrails that have to be uh, managed for this i think even the organizations that are using certain open source models uh, and open uh, say are willing to share that information should do that with that uh, caveat in mind that the data might be available across uh, if you are not breaking those uh, guidelines or guardrail steps with that wonderful thanks thanks for sharing your thoughts uh, you know i want to ask this quest question and come to everyone uh, uh, let me start with you uh, mr saha you know as uh, generative ai gets mainstream it gathers that momentum uh, when you talk about uh, safe guarding organizations you know uh what kind of uh, measures should be in place because we are all headed into a certain kind of unknown territory somewhere we are not really familiar with it's an unfamiliar space so what according to you uh, should be the safeguards that we go in it uh, with certain measures in place yeah thanks sir so uh so the first thing uh, that comes to my mind is that uh, the generative ai is like a virtual assistant assists you in doing something so first we need to accept that particular fact that it is an assistant it is uh, not a substitute even if a content is created through generated ai it is assisting you in creating a content it is not a substitute of the content so i'll give you an example for example you know in one of our brands uh, we are struggling to communicate the concept properly through uh, the pack design the pack design. we were struggling we had employed a design agency who was struggling right we are not being able to get the right kind of visual which will communicate the concept to the consumer in a lucid and very easy manner so it went on for 2 to 1 and a half months 3 months and then you know we used chat gpt at a certain point of time to see we use uh, not chat gpt we used mid-journey actually to figure out that can it you know uh, help us convert the key elements that we want to communicate into a visual representation which can be used in a way and it came out with some interesting solutions it took some time to train the model to see the contextualize it etc to give some information about the brand some data etc but uh, it was able to give some directions which the designer can could use 
and come up with a design which was easily accepted. So I think that is important. Accept this particular fact that yes, it is an system, but also to appreciate this fact that it is not a substitute. Uh, we should also understand that yes, the model, the you know, the genetic AI models that we have right now, they have reached a certain level. It will improve going forward. That is also a you know a belief that we should have. Yeah, let's adopt it. Okay, it can solve to some extent, right? But it will you know improve as we go. And uh, we also uh, need to understand this particular fact that it will impact the way we are going to do business in the future. So we don't have a choice. It is going to improve, and it is also going to impact. Those are some of the guardrails uh, we should accept that we have to live within this particular ecosystem. And uh, I think these are few elements that we need to organize uh, right. while we adopt. Thanks, 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 Mr. Saab, for sharing your thoughts. Ms. Agarwal, uh, how would you like to respond to this? Healthcare at itself is a very, very restrictive environment. Um, data privacy, security, uh, patient privacy, security is a very, very guarded area by uh, by the government uh, and by the patients themselves and by the healthcare institution too. So hence, um, though we actually would want uh, this technology to be leveraged to the maximum, these are uh, very fundamental building blocks that need to be there. Uh, when we try to utilize it for any kind of uh, you know reach that we are trying to uh, to make uh, here either with respect to uh, creating a customized journey or trying to give some specific nudges or trying to interact with the patients so this is something that uh, i think could be one of the thing that need to be essentially taken care of while uh, creating this and definitely currently there are a lot of a um, lot of um, uh, what do you say a um, lot of um, um, i would say that um, boundaries which are being drawn by uh, government and um, in, at large generally yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so that uh, you know these uh, bare minimum things are actually you know, put in place while we are trying to advance in technology and um, and trying to you know build an open space ai on top of you know with this kind of uh, you know technology advancement balance with open source ai and then privacy these are uh, these are three things that need to be you know uh, married together to actually ensure that what we actually provide to our uh, patient is actually very very secure safe and very specific to their need uh, it cannot be, uh, you know, otherwise it will be very, very difficult uh, to control what is happening. So, uh, you know, this is something that need to be taken care of. So that is uh, something that I thought I wanted to share regarding this point. Mr. Vastava. Yes. Uh, so on the safeguarding part, um, I think what everyone has spoken about, I will, from my side, I, will, I would like to add one point on ethical considerations, right? Um, and uh, we, we all, we talk about ethics a lot, especially part of Tata Group. Uh, we are known for ethical conduct, ethical, you know, following ethical practices. So this is one of the things that we uh, in our organization also follow very diligently um, about uh, being very, very clear of what we are storing and how algorithms are built, which is helping in decision making. So be fair and, you know, cut all the biases that system is generating uh, using the technology. So that is one thing. And uh, second is on the transparency part. Be very transparent to customers how we're using the data and uh, what are we using it for. Uh, and uh, all of uh, you know options opt in and taking consent from customer before storing any data or any personal information it is a part of the process that we have like everyone said it is a very basic hygienic uh, 
you know activity that all companies should do uh, to be to safeguard customer data personal information and everything that we are storing and using that data very mindfully thoughtfully uh, with all the consent from customer being very unbiased taking very unbiased approach and being fair in decision making um, through if whether using ai generative ai or any other technology i think you brought in a very important point of ethics and uh, use of ai uh, absolutely uh, true uh, mr ranjan your thoughts right so everyone spoke about the important points of our data security and privacy which is very important apart from that also putting in a very controlled environment to start with that is something which is very important uh, if you open into the entire world on the web a lot of information which will come which is not relevant to your brand or your organization so testing it out putting it for the human review and then implementing a scaling up is something which is going to be very important great mr sharma yeah uh, i think overall it's very very interesting points um, so uh, realizing that it's an assistive technology uh, to begin with you probably at this point uh, need an expert oversight uh, on a lot of the uh, data which is coming in uh, the second important point is uh, the bias that may creep in because the, of the way the model has been trained uh, the model is trained based on how people have responded to similar set uh, of questions and basically that's how it constructs its response so if there is bias uh, inherent bias within the data itself and in in some of the cases they uh, that actually may be true in the actual user behavior as well but you don't really want to propagate that bias uh, in terms of recommendations for example in case of data click so i think that's important uh, to guard against bias biases as well and there should be that feedback loop uh, that actually connects back to uh, the model uh, which actually helps you uh, correct uh, that bias uh, in a in a more uh, real time basis i don't think that exists uh, within the current models currently because it's a very very intensive training uh, say model um, and the third thing uh, that i really think uh, is important uh, is to realize that It, it is not only using information across the internet uh, when you are opening up your system um, uh, there but it's actually also sharing your information uh, across the internet um, so anyone who would be able to um, say who's looking for a similar use case might actually get access to how you have approached it uh, and that model may be able to uh, use that and disseminate that information that was the case that happened with samsung very recently so i think all of those guardrails you'll actually have to still maintain uh, maybe uh, think about a model that this information doesn't go out uh, to the general internet at large you may want to think about on prem or uh, secure uh, database connections that uh, do not share this data across so these are the three things i would say no very wonderfully uh, stated you know it's not the, that we pull out from the net it we also give it And and it has to be safeguarded. Uh, let me come to you, Mr. Murthy, on this uh, same question about you know the safeguards that should be in place uh, as we head into the unknown. Honestly, probably the most important thing that has to be addressed, right? Uh, you know, one is all about compliance of laws and regulatory requirements when it comes to data residency, privacy, retention, so on and so forth, right? But uh, At Salesforce, trust has been our number one guiding value from the time we started this company. Company way back in 1999, right? Uh, ethics are more important than ever in this new day of generative AI, right? Uh, we have five uh, guidelines for responsible uh, generative AI in practice: transparent, accurate, safe, empowering, and sustainable, right? Uh, you know, to actually bridge this entire gap. Salesforce has announced a trust layer. With the trust layer, we can strip PII information uh, from prompts using data masking tools, so that sensitive data is not even processed by the LLM, and any response generated from those models is scanned for toxicity and bias, as well as audited for compliance reasons. Right. Finally, and most importantly, your data is never stored outside of Salesforce. 
as soon as an external model processes your prompt, the prompt and the generation are both forgotten. Data is never stored or retained for any reason. Not for monitoring, not for quality, and certainly not for data training, right? So we believe that your data is not our product, right? Generative AI has transformative potential, but its adoption also comes with responsibility. Uh, by implementing such safeguards and best practices, organizations can navigate unknown landscapes of generative AI while prompting ethical, safe, and beneficial applications of this technology. Responsible AI development will be the key to realizing the full potential of generative AI while mitigating potential risks. Absolutely. I think it comes down to, I mean, of course, thought leaders like you, you know, paving the way and setting the tone for this. As you said that, how you protect and ensure that data is not misused, you know, these, is, these are inbuilt into your offerings. Uh, well, I think uh, we are, uh, you know, done with the discussion and I am really, you know, uh, sure that uh, the audience will benefit from the insights because we got some really uh, detailed insights about this unknown space of what AI would do, how would it map the sentiment, how would you do the data, how would you ma manage the complexity uh, to what it can do in other sectoral uh, highlights and how would it combine the predictive and the generative, how would they kind of uh, be uh, fall in line. So um, it has been a great discussion. Uh, uh, again, uh, it was Salesforce and E4M that bought you uh, the first of the series that we have lined up. And uh, thank you, everyone, uh, Mr. Vastava, Mr. Saha, Mr. Murthy, Mr. Sharma, Ms. Agarwal, and Mr. Ranjan for joining us on this uh, conversation, sharing your valuable insights. And we look forward uh, that you know people, whoever will be watching it, benefits from it and gets a sense of what uh, generative AI would look like. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this discussion. Thank you so much, Ruhel, for being a great host. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. I think Thank really you, everyone. a lot uh, through this just discussion overall. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.